Namaskaram my friends I hope you're all doing fine and I hope 9 minutes at 9 pm was a great experience for all of you because it was a very historical moment a hopeless despairing despondent demoralized to some extent dejected nation stood up stood together in solidarity 1.3 billion people pledged to win with lighted lamps and candles now today i had no plans to talk to you i was planning to rest but then things always don't happen according to our plans and why i am back again today despite having planned to take rest is that those 9 minutes at 9 pm those 9 minutes evoked a flood of thoughts in my mind and i thought that it is extremely urgent that i share them with you and besides evoking a flood of thoughts i also had a brain wave which again i must share with you now you see this concept of lighting lamps candles flashlights and the mobile phones etc all coming together for 9 minutes at 9 pm i mean <coughs> many people had many opinions many people had many interpretations i don't know what was in the mind of our respected prime minister but many people shared their opinions and interpretations there was a lot of criticism also as there always is but my experience my thoughts and reflections and particularly my realization during those 9 minutes is what i am <coughs> here to share with you now see what i felt actually during those 9 minutes i was in the last stages of my meditation i was doing a particular meditation module and during those last 9 minutes i had a very strong realization and i'm very thankful to my guru parampara for giving me this realization and being able to share them with you you see the word guru gu is darkness and ru is light so guru is that tatva guru is that agent that force which can remove the darkness from our lives that is why guru purnima is <coughs> such an important purnima now this guru tatva the concept of light removing eliminating darkness and the guru mandala the entire parampara of the tradition of the league of masters of siddhas and 
thereafter to the higher level, the Almighty Supreme Consciousness Shiv Shiva. India as a nation today, 1.3 billion people. <coughs> Maybe we stood in our balconies near our windows, near our doors, maybe some stepped up, maybe we stood there as a nation in solidarity, pledging to win this battle against COVID-19. People had different ideas. Some people had no idea at all. Some people did it as a mechanical routine which was set up by the Prime Minister himself. But I, what I felt is that as a nation, 1.3 billion people actually evoked this tattwa, actually invoked the siddhas. We managed to summon, we manage to call upon, we manage to implore our ancestors, our siddhas, the gurus, the guru mandala and the divinity himself. Because fire is the vehicle which connects humanity to God to divinity and that is why the fire sacrifice the yagna was so important during the Vedic times and Agni is the first word of the Rig Veda and I think as a nation today India Bharat was able to bring down upon earth That divine light, which is the only force, which is the only Shakti, which can salvage the situation we are in today, which can free us, which can emancipate us from the hands of Corona. Now, this entire process which went on for nine minutes, I don't know what was the thought, what was the objective with which it was planned and declared. But in general, we believe that the nation came in together, everybody, it was a collective action, it was a collective coming together in a time when things are falling apart, when the numbers are increasing, when there, have, when there has been a sudden spike in the number of COVID cases. A nation which is jittery, a nation which is hopeless and helpless needed such an action to boost its morale, to increase its mental strength. The people of the nation needed this spirit, needed this spirit of togetherness to be injected in them. Maybe it was with this objective, with this goal that this drill was planned, this action was planned. But when this, these nine minutes were going on, the realization that dawned upon me was that this action actually 
enabled us as a nation to stand before the heavens with a lamp lit in our hands and every lamp in every hand actually implored actually called upon actually invoked summoned all the gurus all the siddhas the guru mandala and the divine light itself to come down upon earth and save us humanity as a species during those moments i was reminded once again of a sonnet a few lines from a sonnet written by rishi aurobindo light endless light darkness has room no more light endless light darkness has room no more i move in an ocean of stupendous light i move in an ocean of stupendous light joining my depths to the eternal height joining my depths to the eternal height i think on the 5th of april 2020 at 9 pm for 9 minutes india as a nation and all indians who lit their individual lamps were able to join their depths to the eternal heights i think we very successfully connected with the guru tatva with the guru mandala with shiv shiva with the divine pure sacred white light which alone has the power to remove to dispel this darkness now this exercise may have been not taken in a good spirit by many many criticized this exercise many spoke about it from the astrological point of view as to what was the lagna what was the ruling star nakshatra during that time how astrologically this these 9 9 minutes were important how 9 is the number of mars and mars is the fighter mars is the winner mars goes out to battle so the mars energy was being awakened and aroused there were many interpretations and many opinions and each one according to his or her understanding narrated his or her point of view but what i am telling you today my friends is a realization which dawned upon me during those 9 minutes when i was in a meditative contemplative state and i felt that as a nation we were able to implore to summon to invoke the guru tatva the guru mandala our ancestors who are responsible to whom we must be thankful and the divine light itself now one thing i would like to mention here it is very important is that i have said this many times before but i think it needs to be repeated constantly because we must not forget this is that this holocaust this catastrophic calamity that humanity is facing today as 
astrologers had no clue about it. They were merrily making the fairy tale predictions of 2020. From November 2019 itself, about each ascendant and each moon sign. Callous, irresponsible, and completely shameless. I'm very sorry to say this about my own fraternity, but it's a fact. You see, when there were big terrorist attacks, we had 9-11 in the US, in the United States of America, we had the Mumbai attacks in our own country. And there was an there was a lot of talk about security lapse. The intelligence agencies, the secret service agencies, they are supposed to give prior information about such huge threats. I mean, these are not small sporadic attacks. So, Whatever we are facing today is a holocaust. It is absolutely apocalyptic. And the scale, the magnitude of this event, there can be no excuse, there can be no alibi, there can be no justification. in favor of all astrologers who were merrily spinning, weaving fairy tales from November onwards, November 2019 onwards, and are still doing the same today. And over and above that, they are lecturing us about when we are going to get relief from coronavirus, which are the planets responsible, how to assess, gauge our immunity system, our immunity levels from planets. Callous, irresponsible and shameless, they continue to lecture us on these along the lines of the moon signs and the ascendants. When this whole drama started on the 26th of December 2019 with the total solar eclipse in the sign Sagittarius, I had clearly mentioned, all those videos are uploaded on YouTube, that it was a galactic center alignment of the solar system, of the solar family, and a galactic radiation from the huge black hole at the center of our galaxy was going to be emanated. Solar system was out of context. It has no jurisdiction anymore. The radiation was not a solar radiation. It was a galactic radiation and from the galaxy the radiation is a gamma ray radiation, which is extremely destructive and destroys en masse. I had mentioned all this during my discussions. In spite of that, in spite of the fact that the planets actually have no jurisdiction now, the only planet perhaps to which we can latch on to now for some kind of assistance is maybe Jupiter. Because Jupiter is the Dev Guru, is the protector. But poor fellow is now debilitated and under the governance of Saturn. So he has very little to do. And he has done his villainous bit while in his own house Sagittarius. At the moment and from now on for a 
very long time to come, for quite some time to come now. The entire scale of events, the entire ground of operation is going to be much above the planetary level. We can try and assess and, you know, seek to find as much as possible a clue here and a link there. But the planets are not going to help us because the entire scenario has gone to a different level of operation. And these astrologers are continuously carrying on with their moon sign predictions. Totally shameless, unabashed. They have no conscience, they don't even think that my God, I didn't even make a mention of such a big event. And not only that they didn't make a mention of such a big event, they went on to say beautiful things, hopeful things, joyous events they predicted for many moon signs and many ascendants. Pied Piper of Hamlin, anyone remembers? I'm sure all of you do. What did the Pied Piper of Hamlin do? He played his piper. A magical, alluring, enticing, entrapping music. And all the rats of Hamlin followed him. I am very sorry to say this, my friends, but all the astrologers you find today who are talking about COVID-19 and particularly the ones from Bengal and Kolkata, they were the ones who were giving us long lists of good things, goodies coming our way in 2020. And they continue to do that for January, February and March also. And they are now lecturing us on COVID-19, on how it happened, back calculation. Didn't have the capacity and the caliber to see it. There was no foresight. Now the afterthought is in full bloom. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, these are the Pied Pipers of Hamlin. And all the rats in huge numbers will follow their tune, the magical, alluring, entrapping tune. Show them, it shows them, draws them to that magical world of happiness, prosperity, success. Wealth, goodness, and the rats will continue to follow the piper because he's playing a very, very magical, alluring, enticing tune. And you will see this, you will continue to see this. The truth will not be followed by the majority. The majority will follow the falsehood. The majority will follow the lies. And the majority will perish. But what we have seen 
at 9 p.m. on 5th of April 2020 for nine minutes. It was a very hopeful sight. It was a very reassuring sight. The heavens saw us coming together. The heavens heard our call, I presume. And we have built a bridge connecting our depths to the eternal heights. The eternal heights which Rishi Aurobindo spoke about in his sonnet. So let us walk along this bridge, my friends, and let us walk along this bridge every day without fail. Let us meditate and let us connect and let us stay connected with the divine. Let us distance ourselves as we have distanced, our, distanced ourselves for so long. And let us take the opportunity that comes out of this distancing to move closer to the divine light. Let us continue to increase, to maintain and increase the distance between ourselves for the sake of our survival. And alongside, let us also continue to increase our proximity to the divine light. The light which we summoned today together as a nation the light which we called upon today, the light which we brought down today as a nation. The light which can lead us forth from these moments, from these hours of gloom, darkness and despair. and take us to a better future. I have already given you meditative processes. You can follow that. And tomorrow or maybe day after I will come up with a very specialized meditative process based on whatever India as a nation did today at 9 p.m. for nine minutes. So let us bring forth the light, let us stay with the light and let us light up our world once again. Namaskaram.